All right, everyone. So our ideas today, we will be uh, setting up our site uh, with Webmaster Tools and looking at another preliminary document, which I highly recommend for your endeavors. So let's go to the desktop and open computer. Open the computer window up there, top left, double click. You'll see a bunch of drives, and the one that you should go for is in the network location, classroom data Z. I don't know if you guys see more than one, but if you see drive Z as in zebra, double click that one. Classroom data drive Z. Double click that. Scroll down to find my class, which is Campos SEO. It's alphabetical. So scroll down there, Campos SEO. Open that folder. Hello, go ahead and have a seat anywhere you'd like. So we're going to then start to work with this document here, uh, PMD Interactive Client Marketing Strategy. You want a copy of that. Drag that to your desktop, or if you brought a USB drive, drag it to your USB. If you didn't bring a USB, that's okay. You can email this to yourself as an attachment. If you need help with that, see me at the end of the day. But what you want to do, what I'm going to do, is drag a copy of that from the network folder to my desktop. You want to drag it. Don't just double click it in the folder because um, it's in our network and everyone's trying to access it. And if you open it, you might lock it out of someone else. So make sure you drag it to your desktop. So once you've dragged a copy of that, the client marketing strategy, let's open it, let's double click it, and we'll go through it together. If anyone needs any help getting that, call me over. Remember, you can help each other out, no problem. But then I do ask that you mind that we're in a classroom and you keep it down a bit. Help each other, but then don't uh, distract the whole class, please. Let's check this one out. This is the marketing strategy. Again, as I said before, I teach this stuff, and I'm also part of a company that we do this stuff for a living. We do it for real clients. We charge them, and we know how uh, paying clients are once they don't get their, once they, if they don't get what they're asking for. So what I'm showing you in these classes are things that, that my company does for real clients, so I'm teaching you the real world stuff. And SEO, modern SEO, is not just about finding your keywords and putting them on your site and your meta tags and all of that. That's the old way. It doesn't quite work anymore. You have to couple that with many other things. For example, here I'm talking about the marketing strategy. So remember I said SEO, search engine optimization, goes hand in hand with something else. Does anyone remember what that something else, that other acronym is? SEM. -E SEM, which stands for search engine marketing. So it's not just search engine optimization, which is basically what you do on your site. It's also SEM, search engine marketing, what you do outside of your site. And that'll become more evident as we go on. But this will be your marketing strategy, version 1. It'll probably change. So there's several sections here, general questions and concepts. Let's check some of these out. So what do you want to accomplish? You have a presence online for a reason. Are you trying to sell something? Are you trying to build awareness? Are you artistic and want people to appreciate your work? Do you have a group you belong to that needs more members? Take a moment to write about what you want to accomplish with your online presence, which is your, your website, your social media, your online presence. For example, Vic.co wishes to create a powerful social media presence because we want to interact with existing customers and through word of mouth, reach new customers. We want to connect with people on Instagram in a very visual way. All right, so here, um, this fictional company, uh, basically, we want to get customers. We want to use our social media to get customers. Obviously, easier said than done. But throughout the course, we'll understand ways to make it easier. So this company is saying, we want to get more customers through word of mouth. We want to reach new customers. We want to use social media. And we want to use Instagram. How many of you have heard of Instagram before? Most people. Instagram is a social network for sharing photos. And you think, well, I can already do that on Facebook. Or maybe I've already got uh, a Flickr account. I can already share my photos. Why do I need Instagram? Instagram is a very popular 
uh, social network with over 300 million users, slightly more than Twitter. If you think Twitter is big, Instagram is bigger. Instagram is very popular, used for a variety of purposes, focused on imagery. So if your product, if your um, online presence is very visual, Instagram might be a good social network for you to tap into. Instagram, of course, is free to set up and free to use. If you take my social media class, we go into detail about becoming an Instagram pro in there. That's going to be next month. So here, the question is being answered, or at least version one of the answer is, what am I trying to accomplish online? Get customers, reach them on Instagram. Those are some good attainable goals. Notice I didn't say sell 1,000 more units. That's another kind of goal, harder to reach, but um, building a foundation will eventually get us to that goal. So again, you don't have to write any of this down now and turn it in. I won't give you a grade. This is for your purposes, although I can look at it and give you my opinion. Any questions on this section? Right? Who is your target audience? It's important to focus on a target audience. It's nice to say that everyone will be interested in your product or your cause or your group, whatever, but it just isn't true in the real world. Who are the people that you would like to know, who would like to know about your product? What are their age ranges, gender, economic group, musical style? In short, who would care about your product? In essence, we are creating a persona of a potential client. The people who want to hire Vic.co are people that are trendy, but know what they want. They are people that are in their 30s who are successful, own their own company, need a website, and know the value of web design. So this happens all the time. My company uh, is starting to form uh, a partnership or, or be hired by uh, a client, and we start to ask them, okay, who, who would want your product? Who would, who would care about it? Who would pay for it? And oftentimes the answer is, is everyone, but that's not the right answer. It can't be the right answer because, for example, there was a client when we asked him this, he said, yeah, everyone wants our product. Their product was baby strollers. No, not everyone wants that product. Not everyone needs that product. So yes, you might be a parent, but does your child still need a baby stroller? Yes? Can I ask you, in your example, uh, baby strollers was kind of like a product uh, where you can easily understand who will need this product, kind of like uh, people who just have a baby all the time. Yes. But uh, sometimes you have a product, uh, maybe you have uh, some cases when you have a product and you need to test target audience. What are you doing for this? How you how you catch, how you, how you understand that these people, this auditory is kind of like target auditory. The thing about if you don't know who your target audience yeah. is, this is part of the, the exercise to figure this out. So what I would do is try to focus group, try to ask a variety of people, maybe on your existing social media, maybe real people that you know, try to ask people uh, people's opinions. Who do you think would care about my product? And you'll be most likely guided toward at least some narrower definition of who would want your product or care about your product. So I would say focus group it. Try to figure that out. And then the focus group, however, might not fully give you the right answer. At least it hopefully will get you in the direction to figure out, okay, my product really is best for women. That's way too broad. Okay, as I kind of focus group it more and ask more people, I figure out, okay, it's best for women between 20 and 30 years old who are in college, let's say. So asking people to help you guide, to help guide you is how you figure that out. So you just are uh, trying to ask people, you do not use, for example, like, um, I don't know, like Facebook ads or like Google ads just to understand some information who just like usually interested in some such stuff. You could. I mentioned the first way because that's the freest way to do it. But there are also Facebook ads and Google ads and so forth that obviously you'll have to spend on to, fig uh, to, reach, an, uh, to reach people to answer your question. And that's perfectly viable also, creating ads to try to figure out your audience. Uh, you might be spending a little bit more money just to kind of figure that out before even focusing on your target audience, but it could be very helpful, definitely. So here in this section, notice I mentioned persona, and that's to figure out, this is a common marketing strategy, which is to create a persona, to create a fictional person that would care about your product, even as deep as giving them a name and giving them an age and where they grew up and creating a little story. 
the big companies do that. They spend millions of dollars, if not hundreds of millions of dollars, in marketing. And they spend the time to create a persona, these fictional people that would love this product. And if they know who would love the product, then they know how then to design their site, how to market the site, how to get on social media and target those people. Obviously, that might be much more work for you, but notice I have a couple of these questions here. What do you think the age ranges of the people that would care about your product, their gender, economic group, you know, high, middle, low, upper, middle class, lower, middle class, upper, 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 higher class, I don't know, you have to define uh, as best as you can these people that would care about your product. And in the beginning, again, this might be way too much of a nebulous question to even be thinking about it, but I want you to start thinking about it because it'll help you in the long term to be able to target an audience. Yes? And that, uh, how would you figure out the economic group? This is uh, pretty much on your opinion at the moment. You may think, okay, I'm gonna try to target my product to the to people that earn twenty thousand dollars a year because they can afford my product, or I'm gonna target people that earn ninety thousand dollars a year because they can afford my product. So where do you start searching to find them? Again, it's your opinion. Uh, whatever your product is, or whatever your cause is, or whatever your online presence is, start to um, think about defining that economic group. And then to actually find that out, that would be, again, more research, um, more um, focus grouping, because you could ask your friends and, and family, people that you know on Facebook or social media, uh, I've got this product or I've got this uh, service. Do you think charging $100 an hour for it is affordable? People will tell you, no, it's too expensive. Or yes, that's, that's what's worth it. So in the beginning, this is uh, opinion. And then as time goes on, it should be refined more. Notice the persona or the target audience that I created here at the end. People who are in their 30s, successful, however I define it, monetarily, happiness-wise, whatever successful is, I could focus that a little bit more, own their own company, so young entrepreneurs, people that are young entrepreneurs have their own website, 30, in their 30s, they need a website, we'll design it for them, and they also know the value of web design, because people always ask, me or my company, how much would it cost for you to make us a website? Well, honestly, the answer to that is, what's your budget? Because if your budget is $1,000 in total, well, you're going to get a website that's worth $1,000 at our going rate of $100 an hour. So that's 10 hours of work to design your, your website. And that might be all that you need. Maybe a website or a client really needs an advanced website that sells a product and that has forums and all of these advanced features, that would easily be a $5,000 website. More complex websites, of course, can be $10,000. But I'm saying here, we're going to target people that know the value of web design, that know that this stuff has a value, even though it's not a physical product like a phone that I know this is worth $400, because that's what the store sells it for, a website can be $5,000 easily because of all of the work that goes into it, all of the effort. So we're only going to be targeting people that know that value. We're not going to bother with the small fries. We can uh, guide them to other people that are better within that budget. But uh, for us, we're going to be targeting the people that understand the value monetarily and <coughs> esoterically um, of web design. Do you have any aspirational competition? It's good to have role models both in life and in business. Is there a business you see that makes you think, I want to be like that? Or a business that makes you think, I want to do that, but better? List a company, person, brand, etc. that you feel is in competition with you, but that you would like to emulate. Why do you want to emulate them? Vic.co feels that XY Designs is our aspirational competition because they are well known in the field of web design and their style is unique and modern. So here you have to look who's the competition. Remember on day one last week, we did a bit of that. We did keyword research. We saw all of these websites that appeared before our website. 
and that's part of your competition. Uh, you would then look at those, at those companies as your competition and see which of those you'd like to emulate, which of those you'd like to do better than, and then that will help you reach your goals because then you know what the competition is doing. What are they doing right? What can you do better? So I have an, a real-world example. I'll be showing some of our clients in the, um, as the class goes on, but uh, one of our clients that we have is a restaurant, a Mexican food restaurant. And uh, that particular client has been around for a while. They started in Tijuana in 1990, and then they came to the U.S. in about 2008, and then uh, San Diego, and then moved up, to, and then expanded to Los Angeles in uh, 2000, uh, la last year, 2000, uh, early 2014. So they've been doing well. When we started working with them, and created this whole strategy for them, and we asked them, who's your aspirational competition? Who do you see that is in competition with you, but that you want to emulate and, and get better, or do better than? And he said, Phil's Barbecue. Now, how many of you heard of Phil's Barbecue? If you haven't, Phil's Barbecue is a pretty famous name in the world of barbecue in San Diego. Um, you know, barbecue itself is a, is a big topic if you didn't know about it because there's different regional styles and recipes and all of that. Uh, there's whole TV shows all about barbecue, uh, competitions throughout the U.S. This client, as I just said, it's Mexican food. Specifically, it's, it's traditional slow-roasted lamb barbecue. So not even, you know, beef, not the beef that you see at Phil's Barbecue, this is lamb in its traditional Mexican style, slow roasted, barbacoa de borrego, slow roasted lamb barbecue. And then you would think, well, why is this company, Mexican food company, trying to compete with an American food company if the kinds of barbecue are completely different? The point is that the owner said, well, Phil's Barbecue has a wait, even just to walk in the door. There's a, there's a little sign in the corner in the parking lot that says, expect a 45 minute wait from this point just like a ride at Disneyland. You're going to be waiting just to get on the ride. You're going to be waiting just to walk into the restaurant. And that name, Phil's Barbecue, is synonymous with barbecue in, in San Diego. There might be, of course, better barbecue joints, but the big name is Phil's Barbecue. So the owner of this client, uh, uh, the client wants to be synonymous with Mexican food in San Diego, or authentic Mexican food, traditional Mexican food, he wants to have uh, a waiting list outside the door to get in. He currently has a waiting list on weekends, but he wants to have a waiting list seven days a week, just like Phil's Barbecue. He wants to be synonymous with authentic Mexican food in San Diego. So that's why he's aspiring to be like Phil's Barbecue. He doesn't have to be the exact niche, the exact uh, food, but it's still a goal to reach. So you have to think. You have to put aside your, your pride and your ego and say, okay, who's doing it? Maybe who's doing it better than me at the moment, but who am I going to one day surpass? What are they doing and what can I do better? Any questions on this section? We've got vision statement. A mission statement from last week tells the world where you stand. A vision statement tells the world where you're going. Write a statement that makes predictions about what you want to accomplish as a company or brand. You may set a time horizon, five years for example, also. Vic.co will be known for providing eye-catching web design for San Diego's most elegant restaurants. So my previous mission statement might have been talking about our mission is to create great websites at an affordable price, etc., etc. But our goal, our vision in five years or whatever, is that we want to be known in the world of uh, the restaurant business as the go-to place to make a website. So the, the, um, we want to be targeting restaurants we want to be known to the restaurant um, demographic because we make eye-catching websites. They're elegant. They serve the client well. That's our goal, our vision within this amount of time. 
So mission statement, vision statement. Mission statement is what you're doing now, and vision statement is what you want to be doing, what your ultimate goal is. And then there's the USP, the unique selling proposition. What do you provide your customers that no one else can? What makes you stand out from the rest? How do you uniquely solve their problems? Answer the question of why. That is, why would a client hire you? Vic.co is based in San Diego, and many of our team graduated from Southwestern College, San Diego State University, and UCSD. We therefore know the local culture. We can create compelling websites that cater to San Diego companies. So you can get a company that does web design from all over the US, all over the hemisphere, all over the world. You may be able to get a very affordable website from someone doing it in Canada, let's say. But they're not San Diego based. Maybe you are a company that really has, that's San Diego based and really wants to target the San Diego audience. So our unique selling proposition is that we're here in San Diego. We know the culture. We grew up here. We went to these schools. Uh, we know the lingo. We know the hotspots. We want to create a site that caters to you as a San Diego company. That's one of the things that could make us unique. So you have to think, what makes you unique compared to every other web design company, every other realtor, every other dog walker, etc.? What makes you unique? What problem do you solve? Why would a company hire you compared to the rest? This is related to this concept. Let me draw a little picture here. Let's see. We have three circles. And on the outer circle, we have the question of what. Inside of that, we have the question of how. And inside of all of that, we have the question of why. So you will reach a better audience, a more dedicated audience, a more valuable audience if you are able to answer the question of why, as opposed to how or what. The what is, what is the product you're selling? I'm selling web design services. That's the what. Great. So is everyone else. So are 500 other companies in San Diego. So therefore, I'm not that unique. My what is my product or my service? Um, the how is, well, okay, how are you going to accomplish that product or service? Um, or how is it going to, uh, how would the client use it? Um, how will I uh, sell them the product? Um, how is my service useful? Um, so in this case it would be its usefulness. So how or how would I implement it for their website? Uh, okay, I'm making the what is the, is my service of, as a web designer. And uh, the how is we're going to make a great website that has e-commerce features and a place for people to review uh, products. That's the how. It's the details of how the product, in my case a website, accomplishes the, the user's goals, which is to sell cupcakes. And that might not be as 
as novel or as unique still. There might still be other solutions, like let's say, uh, okay, we, we're going to make websites for people, that's the what. And then the how is we're going to use Dreamweaver. We're going to use Dreamweaver because Dreamweaver has all of these great features for users to be able to comment, to rate products, to ask tech support, and so forth. Great. You can do that, and so can everyone else make a Dreamweaver, uh, make a WordPress site. Well, maybe another company instead uses a, uh, a Joomla site and can accomplish the same thing, but in a different way. Or maybe they can make a, Word, a, a, a Dreamweaver site. So again, that's not unique, as unique. The why is why would the client ultimately choose you? What is unique about you? Um, why would they hire you? What, um, uh, how, how is the, the product going to solve their particular needs? So the why is more like, why do you resonate with client? What is it about your way of doing things, or your product, or your methods, or your history that you can relate with uh, with the client. Again, I said a moment ago, most of us in the company are from San Diego. We grew up here. We, uh, you know, we, we lived through the drought together. We lived through the big power outage together. Remember that a few years ago? All of the power was gone throughout San Diego. Uh, we went to schools and colleges around the area, just like you, the client. Um, we are going to create this product this website that we believe in because we believe it's also a representation of us and a representation of San Diego, a representation of your target audience. So the why is why would a company hire you? What do you do? How do you resonate with the client? What's the personal touch? So again, you might think, well, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to, you know, sell, um, you know, aluminum siding there is still something that you could figure out to create a personal connection with the people wanting or thinking about buying the aluminum siding from you. Um, so that's the harder one to, to answer perhaps. The what is pretty easy, that's your product, and the how, how you're implementing it, but the why, that's the harder one, and really it's, it's uh, de the detail of that, or the answer for that is, unique to everyone in this room and I'm happy to talk with you one-on-one -on -one throughout the throughout the class to help you figure any of this stuff out remember we have the, the the breaks every hour and we have the lab time half an hour at the end of the day so I'm happy to help you figure out any of this stuff and it might be again way too nebulous to think about now but it's something you should make notes of and start to think about yes have you heard of the Simon Sinek TED talk that's about the why this is uh, this is basically the, that concept that I'm getting from that author. Yeah. So let me save this and, and let me get back to that. That's a very good point. I want people to know about that. So uh, let me let me save this file. If you want a copy of it, I'll put it in the in the network folder in just a moment. I didn't know he had a head, uh, he had a TED talk about it. I was thinking about the book. There's a book. Yeah, it's like 20 minutes. All right. Let's look. Let's look that up. So the, this concept that I was, uh, the, this concept that I was borrowing here comes from uh, an author uh, who um, codified it better than I can, and he has a, a lecture. Of, uh, is it free? A free a lecture that really explains it. We just have to look it up here. TED.com. If you haven't heard about that website, it's a it's a website where people uh, do lectures in a variety of topics with a variety of times, and about a variety of concepts, TED.com. And um, this concept that I was just talking about comes from a book, and then it's it's a lecture that you might want to look into. I forget how to spell his name, though. Do you, do you know at the moment? Simon, and then Sinek is S-I-N-E-K. I think, yeah. Um, I want to say it was the first one. So if you go to TED.com and then search the author's name, Simon Sinek, uh, you'll find a couple of his lectures and uh, probably the first one here. Oh, there it is, why. So um, has a simple but powerful model for inspirational leadership, all starting with the golden circle, which we just looked at, and the question why. His examples include Apple, Martin Luther King, and the Wright brothers. So that's, uh, he mentions 
that comes from his book, which is uh, very useful. And specifically, he's talking about leadership, but it also applies to marketing, as in, for example, Apple. Uh, love him or hate him, Apple is one of the biggest, most important companies in the world, one of the most profitable companies in history. Again, you might live and die by your, by your Google phone or your Samsung phone, but Apple is uh, highly profitable, inspirational, for better or for worse. And he talks about what did that company do to be so popular, so well-known, so powerful. So that's a lecture that I recommend that you watch. It's not that long. And this is a website that I recommend, TED.com, to find more lectures and ideas and uh, inspirational stuff. And again, I thought this class was just going to be about we're going to put our keywords inside of our site and that's it. Well, it's, that's, that's only half the puzzle. That's only a piece of the puzzle. That's the SEO, search engine optimization. We have to deal also with SEM, search engine marketing. And this is an aspect of that, isn't it? Knowing your company and um, all of its aspects and answering why and who's your target audience and all of that. Because you're going to be rudder rudderless if you're just going to go to your website, add your meta tags, and try to get on Twitter if you don't have goals. And that's what I'm trying to codify in this, um, in this file and in the previous one. So any questions? Okay, let's um, let's take our first break slightly early, because what I want to do is after the break start fresh to look at the big topic of um, the, the the webmaster tools. So we'll take a ten minute break. It's ten twelve. We'll be back at ten twenty two, and then we'll look at webmaster tools.